Well, this was a, a, a presentation that I'm giving, I gave at ESH this year. Um, it was about um, attempts to improve uh, treatment uh, options for younger patients with um, um, uh, AML with high risk disease, patients with high risk um, cytogenetics, patients with poor response to in initial induction therapy. We know these patients um, have a poor uh, prognosis and in the AML17 trial, uh, these patients were categorized as high risk using a risk score following the first cycle of chemotherapy. And they end, then entered uh, about 30% of patients overall was defined as high risk. And these patients were then entered into a separate randomization of the FLAG-IDA regimen against a clofarabin-based regimen of dornarubicin and clofarabin. Overall, about uh, only 50% of patients were in remission at the time of entry into this randomization. After uh, post-completion uh, um, of the first course of therapy, of, of first course of high-risk therapy, i.e. either Flagida or Diclo, um, then um, the final complete remission rate was about 85%, so very high CR rate for high-risk patients. The median age of these patients is about 55, and overall, they all had intermediate or adverse risk cytogenetics. Um, and uh, overall, 56% of these patients did go on to an allo transplant, and there was no difference between the two arms, whether they received the clofarabin-based regimen or the flagida-based regimen. Um, and this was an increase on the percentage of patients with high-risk AML that were made that got to transplant compared to our previous AML15 trial. And there was more MRD, slightly more MRD negative after the FLAGIDA arm. And although FLAGIDA was more toxic in terms of blood product utilization and time spent in hospital and time spent on intravenous antibiotics, there were the overall survival after the high risk of randomization was significantly in patients, in favor of patients who received flag IDA so that the survival at four years for patients receiving flag IDA was 44% compared to 30% for patients who received the D, the dorubicin clofarabin regimen. And very interestingly, um, of those patients who received flag IDA pre trans and then went on to the transplant, their overall and relapse free survival was significantly imp improved. Um, compared to those receiving the clofarabin-based regimen, so that the um, five-year survival in patients receiving uh, FLAG-IDA was uh, 65% compared to 40% for those patients receiving clofarabin. So I think what this data shows is that early recognition of high-risk disease is important, um, intensification of, of, of chemotherapy rather than continuing with standard chemotherapy. And in this case, the, the best results came with intensification to FLAG-IDA. More patients then achieved uh, MRG negativity. A significant higher proportion of patients were able to proceed to allo transplant. And impressively, the results of um, uh, transplant were improved in these patients because of a lower risk of relapse in patients that had, had salvage, uh, that had received intensification with FLAG-IDA. Um, so I think long-term survival is achievable in high-risk AML. Allotransplant is the treatment of choice. Early recognition of high-risk disease is crucial. Optimizing induction and pre-stem cell transplant therapy allows more patients to get to transplant in, first, in, in remission. That um, MRD assessments um, prior to transplant can identify an ongoing high-risk patients. That these uh, novel therapies, uh, including, uh, you can't call flag a novel therapy, but the place of new emerging therapies such as venetoclax, IDH inhibitors, um, uh, antibodies such as anti-CD47 that I mentioned previously may allow more poor risk patients or high risk patients to progress to transplant with a lower risk of relapse in the post-transplant period.